Now let us enter into the Vishuddhi Chakra. Vishuddhi means which is beyond Shuddhi. Shuddhi means purification. Ashuddhi means impure. impure. Shuddha means which is pure. Ashuddha means which is impure. Vishuddha means which is beyond pure and impurity, which cannot be contaminated at all. The Vishuddhi Chakra actually cannot be contaminated. It is always it full of energy and life. Only we cover it with some ideas. We try to disturb it. How? How we try to disturb it? How to clear it? We will see in this session. Jealousy and comparison that locks, disturbs the Vishuddhi Chakra. When you are accepting and understanding your own uniqueness, when you are not comparing yourself with others, when you are not jealous about the other about others, this chakra opens. Let us enter into the idea, comparison. What is comparison? Comparing with others, comparing with the neighbors, comparing with the nearby person, comparing with colleague, comparing with brothers, comparing between family people. Let us enter what are all the major aspects which creates or destroys our life. The major things in our life, money, one thing. Hmm. Let us go for some more ideas. What are all the major things which affects our life? Money, one by one by one. Money. Luxury. That is not luxury comes under money. Okay. Health. Okay. Ambition also comes under money. If money is there. Mm. Position. Mm. Personality. Under the word personality, all the relationship can be brought. Beauty. Mm. See, something tangible which directly affects your life style, your life method. That's what I wanted. Personality, right. Money, right. Education, right. Intellect, attitude, education, all these things come, come under one category. Hmm? Intellect. People used to tell that I have no ego at all. The I itself is ego. <laughs> I have no ego. The first <laughs> word I is ego. <laughs> it's a vague word. Hmm? Directly you can't do anything about ego. Hmm? Oh, I will explain what is ego. Because this chakra is something to do with ego only. Hmm? Let us... A direct word ego, people we feel get frightened. If I say that you have to kill the ego or drop the ego, immediately they drop me instead of dropping the ego. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't touch the word ego. Let us... I go in a diplomatic way <laughs> to touch the ego. <laughs> Because dropping the ego is almost like an operation. Hmm? It's, it should be done in a diplomatic way. Hmm. One thing, money. Next, name and fame. Power. Power, name and fame. Everything comes under this title. Name and fame. Beauty. Intellect. In this four major classification, everything else can be put. Money, name and fame, power, intellect, beauty. This four classification, this four will do. In this four, all the other things, whatever you say, the education, everything can be 
classified under this four category. These four things are the things which affects a man's life very seriously. Let us enter. What is our status in this four category? Are you a rich man? Are you a poor man? <laughs> Are you a man of name and fame? You can't say yes or you can't say no. Are you beautiful? <laughs> Difficult question. <laughs> Honestly, you have to tell the truth no other way. Neither you can say yes nor you can say no. Same way, if you ask somebody, are you an intelligent person, I can't. <laughs> so you will be in trouble, let us not go for that question. <laughs> are you an intellect, if I ask somebody? You can neither say yes, nor say no. All these four things, which continuously haunts our life, you are almost tortured, killed by these four major subjects, issues, you are continuously mentally tortured. Your whole day is haunted by this poor subject. Is it not? Am I right? You are continuously haunted, harassed, disturbed, spused by this poor subject. But you don't know your status in these four subjects. Just open your eyes and see. You are creating your own suffering without having any clear data. If you have a clear data that you have such and such a problem and if you suffer, okay, you, you can leave it. All right, you suffer. But you have no clear data you have no clear concept. You don't have any clarity, but you continuously suffer. Why? Just now you all told, we can neither say, I am a rich man, nor say, I am a poor man. Because there is a big queue. In front of you, thousands of rich people, thousands of rich people are standing. Behind you, thousands of poor people are standing. It's a, this side also infinite and this side also infinite. Same way beauty. This side also infinite, this side also infinite. Where is the scale for beauty? No scale. An intellect. This side also infinite, this side also infinite. Name and fame. Same thing. You are suffering. If your suffering is dependent on reality, if you are suffering because of this mic, if you are suffering because of a sword, then your suffering is worth suffering. Nothing can be done. We have to remove this or we have to do something. If you are suffering due to some tangible reason, due to some tangible thing, due to reality, then we can do something about your suffering. We can eradicate or if we can't eradicate, at least we can leave it. No, it can't. Nothing can be done. We have a clear picture whether we can help you or we have to leave you. But here, the reason itself is not clear. You are not suffering because of reality. You are suffering because of comparative reality. This is the key. Be very clear. You are not suffering because of reality. You are suffering because of comparative reality. There are two types of existence. One is positive existence, another one is negative existence. This plant, these flowers, they are existing positively. If you want to remove it, you can remove it. If you want to handle it, you can handle it. 
you want to take it and keep it here, you can keep it. But the darkness which is inside the room, that is negatively existing. Can you do something about the darkness? If you want to remove the darkness, can you remove the darkness? Can you handle the darkness? No. Just like a darkness negatively existing, your comparative reality, suffering also, is a negative existence. You can't do anything. If you want to remove the darkness, you have to throw light. Directly you can't do anything with darkness. Just like that. If you want to do something with your Vishuddhi Chakra, just throw light. Just understand that you are neither rich man nor poor man. Instead of continuous looking this side, start looking this side. To satisfy yourself. To be direct. I don't say that don't grow. No, grow. Yearn. Do everything. But psychologically be in a freedom. Psychologically don't be tortured. Don't get tortured. If you are continuously tortured, haunted psychologically, your work, your profession will be disturbed. If you are continuously sick psychologically by comparing with others, if a next house person brings AC, your house temperature increases. <laughs> if he brings AC, your house temperature automatically increases. Why? There is a beautiful song in Tamil, Adittath Ambujatta Pathyala. Hmm? Continuous comparison. Continuous jealousy. Continuously we are trying to live others' desire. Mahavir says beautifully in Jain Sutras when a man comes down to the earth whatever quantity of food he eats he is supposed to eat in his life will be sent to the earth. Same way, the Vedanta says, when a man comes to the earth, whatever he has to achieve in this life, the enough energy is sent along with him. If he has to become a collector, enough energy. If he has to become a Kurorpati, enough energy. Everything is clearly sent along with him. You are given 10,000 rupees and sent to Bangalore to bring 10,000 rupees worthy things. But as soon as you go there, after crossing Dodabalabur, you forget about all about why you started, with how much money you started, everything. With how much of energy you brought, everything is forgotten. And you make some friends in Bangalore and you see what they are purchasing. Instead of you purchasing for only for 10,000, you start purchasing for 20,000 or 25,000, 15,000. Who will pay the 15,000? And start suffering for it. That is what happens when you come down to this earth. You bring enough energy to live your life. What Mahavir says is not a lie or a theory. What he says is an experience. But after coming here, you start comparing with others. Became more greedy. Not only greedy, you change your route. You may have taken birth to become a doctor. But seeing your neighbor is engineer, you tend to that side. You may have taken birth to become a dancer. Seeing your sister is a painter, you try to jump into the painting. So, instead of living our own life, we simply shift the center to different life. Somebody else's life. 
then you don't live your life. You start living somebody else's life. If you live somebody else's life, how do you think that you will have a satisfaction that you have lived? A small story from Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, the greatest scientist of last century, the greatest truth which is discovered in the last century is done by him, discovered by him, the theory of relativity. This man was about to die. About to die is in the deathbed. Doctors are told only few days more he will be alive. All his disciples are sitting around him, his scientist disciples. The disciples were asking, Einstein, if God gives you one more birth, how would you like to take birth? What is the birth you wanted? What way you would like to take birth? What you would have told? He told, I should take birth as a plumber. The woodworking plumber. Then scientists, the people have become simply wonderful, surprised. They asked, why? What happened? Why are you telling in, this, in that way? Einstein says, when I was a small boy, I wanted to become a plumber, a woodworker. In foreign, plumbers do the woodworking. In abroad they are called wood plumbers. Here only the name is different. People who work with wood and the plumbing. Hmm? Wood plumbing. Anyhow. Hmm. Then these people asked, why? What is the reason? Then Einstein replies, I the, when, when I was small, I want to become the plumber. But when I went to learn the work, when I started learning, some of my master has beaten me. Afraid to get beatings, I ran away from there and went and fall in the hands of scientists. And somehow I became an intellectual and I did all these things. Even though I have everything outside, I have money, name and fame, whatever you call it, all the four things. Even then I have everything. I don't have the satisfaction that I have lived my life. I have found the greatest truth of this century, but my life has become lie. My life is not truth. You should learn something, great lesson from his teaching. What he said, only a real mystic can say. A satisfaction of living, the satisfaction that you have lived, is the essential thing. That is the only gift you can get from life. What, whatever else you get from life can be taken away from you. Death will simply take away everything from you. You know, even your body is taken away. Your life is taken away. Only one thing can be left with you. The satisfaction that you have lived your life. If you achieve that from the life, you have achieved whatever can be achieved from the life. If you have not achieved that one thing from life, you have not achieved anything from the life. So even if you die in a platform as an orphan, but if you have the satisfaction that you have lived your life, you will have a peaceful, beautiful death. Otherwise, even if you die in an AC room, in the hospital ICU, top hospitals ICU. No. You will not have the satisfaction that you have lived. That you have lived your life. A continuous comparison and continuous jealousy changes the root of your life. The negative existence, things which don't exist, haunts you in your life. Because you are unaware. Because you are in low energy. That is what Upanishads say, Maya. Yama iti Maya. Which is not there is Maya. But Maya is the cause for all our problems. Hmm? Sorrows. 
Vedanti say, Maya is the root cause for everything, for all our problems. What is the meaning of the Maya? Yama iti Maya, which is not there is Maya. How can you be hunted by which is not there? You can be hunted, you can be harassed, you can be nagged. Somebody who is existing. <laughs> this is already happening, that is different. Somebody who is existing, if they nag you, it's okay. But you are nagged by somebody who is not existing, who is not living, who is Yama, who is not there. How can it happen? This is the way it happens. Which is not there, but which you create. The comparative reality. A continuous comparison with others. Actually it is not there, which you create, a purely your own creation, your own production. Actually you produce, but the title you don't want to put your name, you put somebody else's name. You are the producer of your life, of your life cinema, but out of politeness you put somebody else's name, sometime God's name. Somebody came and asked me, Swamiji, I am full of poverty, what to do? I asked, how many children do you have? Fourteen. <laughs> why, why did you give birth to fourteen? No, no, Swamiji, God gave. <laughs> God gave or you gave? What is happening? He gives, he produces and put God's name. I don't think God's com God comes down to earth <laughs> to produce children. And fourteen, after 14, he says, God gave. What is happening? That is the same thing which we do continuously. We produce everything and put God's name. But God is not going to suffer. God has not come to me. I told, if God gave, let him come to me, I will answer to him. You go. Just trying to escape. You produce, but you put somebody else's name. But that is not the way, that is not going to solve your problems. This chakra is locked by comparison and jealousy. It opens, it gets unlocked by understanding your own uniqueness. Each and every one is unique. The solution to open this chakra is given in a small story by Buddhist, by a Zen Buddhist monk. Once, a king came to see a Zen Buddhist master. You can ask, why oh, yeah, always kings come to see the masters? Only kings can see masters. Be very clear. If a poor man comes, he may pray to me at the most for some welfare, some money, some of his problems. Only if a man who is already satisfied in the outer world, if he comes, he will ask for a real wealth from me. You go to Albert Einstein and ask, what is the one plus one? You are wasting your time and his time. Surely he is not a Sadhaji, so don't bother. <laughs> you are asking your time and his time. You are wasting. The one plus one, you could have asked any primary school teacher. Just like that, if you come to me and ask for some wealth, for some mundane affairs, of course I am going to answer, I am going to tell, I am going to give or I am going to do, that is different. But a man who is satisfied completely with the outer world, if he comes, a man who knows everything about the basics, if he comes, he can directly argue about theory of relativity, what is meant by E equal to mc square. What is meant by energy and matter? You can discuss all these higher things with Einstein. The same way, if a king, the man who is satisfied with the outer plane, if he comes, he can have directly what I want to give. He can have directly what a life can give really. So the king went to Zen master and asked, Master, what is Buddha? He is asking, what is Buddha's state? 
What is meant by Buddha state? Enlightenment. Master, beautiful answers. The cypress in the courtyard is Buddha. Cypress means the plant which Tani bush. The Tani bush is called cypress. The Tani bush which is in my courtyard is Buddha. King naturally is not able to understand. He asks, Master, please give some more explanation. And Master says, Do you see, just next to the Tani bush, a rose bush is also existing. Both are living nearby, continuously for many years. But not even once, Tani bush tried to become a rose bush. And rose bush tried to become a Tani bush. If it happens in you, you are enlightened. Nothing else is needed. Just accepting yourself and taking the responsibility of your being is enough. If we are Tani bush, oh, so many people are coming near the rose bush and enjoying it, plucking it. The rose bush is so beautiful, I could have become rose bush. If you are a rose bush, oh, so many people are continuously coming and plucking me, torturing me. I could have been Tani bush. Nobody will come and touch me. I have been in a safe position. Both the way, the other bank looks greener. A continuous outer vision. This, this, this. Never that. Never in. That is the way this chakra is disturbed. This is this one story if you remember, that's enough. The cypress in the courtyard is Buddha. Because it does not compare itself with others' life. But all our life is haunted, tortured continuously by comparing with others. Comparing with sisters, comparing with brothers. So now, how to come out of the comparison? How to come out of the jealousy? Let us explore how to come out of the jealousy. How to come out of the jealousy? Stop comparing. Beautiful solution. If you all can practice, that's enough. <laughs> yes, these are all the uh, these are all the things to be achieved. How to? Why jealousy comes? What you say is okay. Can you do it immediately as soon as you go out of the uh, room? <laughs> no, I wanted something direct, practical solution. Hmm. Hmm? Drop it. Can you? Beautiful. Then okay, I have no problem. <laughs> you see, the reason for jealousy, root cause for jealousy, is low energy. The low energy. Low energy is the root for jealousy. Because you are not able to achieve, you feel jealous. You tend to compare. You tend to disturb the others. If you can create enough energy in yourself, in your own being, to achieve what you want to achieve, Naturally, you will not have any disturbance or any problems by comparing or by jealousy. Now we will enter into a great Zen Buddhist meditation technique to create more energy in our being, to throw light on Vishuddhi Chakra. The meditation technique which is, which will activate which will energize the Vishuddhi Chakra. All these sessions, we are dealing with two things. One is maturity, another one is meditation. Maturity means the jnana, the knowledge how to handle the chakra. Meditation means 
the energy to handle the chakra. Not only the intelligence, the energy is also needed. Not only you should know how to operate the gear, you should have enough energy in your hand to operate the gears. Then only you can fly. So, about for all the chakras, we have dealt how to operate it, how to use it and we have had meditation technique to have enough energy to operate the chakra. Now, we will enter into the meditation technique. This technique is the gift of Tibetan Buddhism, the Zen Buddhism, the Tibetan Zen Buddhist technique. I'll explain the technique. Some of you may be knowing the technique. We will go for practicing after explaining. A deep conscious vibrations humming should be created in your being. Just sit in a relaxed way. How to sit to balance your being? The Buddhists have taught beautifully. Just squat and put your right leg on the left leg and as soon as you sit see that your spinal cord is in a straight line is in a straight line how to make it in a straight line you can just close the eye and bend your whole body in front and if you feel the weight of the body you will be able to very clearly feel the weight of the body slowly push your body back side slowly very slowly with full awareness at one point at certain point you will feel that your body is weightless the center of gravity falls in line the center of gravity of your body when it is in a straight line, you feel your body weight is less. You feel you are weightless. Just the same way, push your body back side a little bit. Again, bring it slowly with awareness. On a on particular point, the same point, you again feel that you are weightless. Your center of gravity falls in line the right and the left same way if you do it just bend your body with full awareness try to trace the weightless point the less weighted point you will be able to trace at one point your whole body is weightless your center of gravity falls in one line that is the point where you need to sit that is your asana. This is the beautiful technique found by Buddhists to sit for a long time. Buddhist monks sit for 10 hours per day. 10 hours they sit for meditation. I don't think 10 minutes any of us can sit in one posture. But with this technique, today I say we can sit even for 2-3 hours. The technique is such effective if you practice, you can sit surely for 10 hours. But today itself, the technique, if you rightly cut the point, verily you can sit even for 2 hours. Because when your center of gravity falls in straight line, you don't feel the weight of the body. Even when you watch TV, when you are in the office, if you sit in this way, you will see your consciousness is not much disturbed. You will be able to do your activities with more energy, with more freedom. Not, if you have a knee pain, half of the energy will be locked in the pain. If you have a dental pain, if you have a tooth pain, you will be doing dental meditation instead of transcendental meditation. So, what will you be doing? You will not be able to do whatever you want to do. So, this posture will relieve you from the body. First, you will sit 
and then close the eyes. When I say close the eyes, completely close the eyes. I am not telling shut your eyebrows. What we are doing in the name of closing the eyes, when we open the eyes, we see all the images. We see all the pictures. When we close the eyes, we see the same negatives inside. The images flowing. Stop seeing everything. Just close the eyes. Feel that you, both of your eyeballs have become like a stone. Feel that they have become a stone. When you feel that they have become a stone, the movements of eyeballs stops. Then simply you enter into the plane of no thought. Thoughts and eyeball movements are very closely related. When you stop one, the other will stop. If you stop the eyeball movement, the thought will stop. If you stop the thoughts, the eyeball movements will stop. Then after the, once when we stop the eyeballs movement, then we will start creating a humming, a vibration. Imagine your body as a hollow tube or a hollow vessel and create No shouting. So don't worry, no shouting. No need for shouting. Just create a long vibration. As long as possible. As deep as possible. As louder as possible. That's all. No opening the mouth or shouting. Just create deep vibrations. This is enough. Relax your hand. And just create the vibrations that will give you a tremendous energy upsurge. After the 10, after the 20 minutes of vibration, 20 minutes you will be doing the vibration. After the 20 minutes, 10 minutes, all of us will put our awareness on Vishuddhi. You will have, you will see a new energy entering into your Vishuddhi. This technique, when it is regularly practiced, no concentrating on Vishuddhi. But today I am giving this technique especially to energize the Vishuddhi Chakra. So, just concentrate on Vishuddhi, on throat chakra, throat center. So now we will go for technique. You see, if your body is completely under your control, you must be able to make Badmasana without touching the leg. <laughs> you should be able to put Badmasana without touching the leg. You can sit. In a relaxed way, no problem. If possible, put. Otherwise, don't disturb yourself too much. If you disturb yourself too much, you will be continuously thinking about your body. Anyway, you can keep in a relaxed way or in a Buddha posture. You can lock or you can keep in a relaxed way. Only one thing, the key points you understand, balancing the body. Closing the eyes completely. Creating uh, conscious vibrations. When you create a conscious humming, mind will stop. Okay. Shall we start balancing the body? Close the eyes and balance. Start balancing your body. Bend towards the front. Close the eyes. People will be very little difficult. <laughs> Try your best. And feel the weight of your body. And slowly. Very slowly. And try to push your body back side. And slowly, just slowly, with full awareness, slowly raise the body with full awareness. We will just bend towards right. Nicely, as much as possible, just bend. Then only you will be able to find the point. And feel how your body is pulled towards the ground.
slowly come back to the center with awareness then only you will be able to find the center point the point in which you feel light weightless the point in which your center of gravity falls in straight line now we shall bend towards left slowly center your body feel your eyeballs have become stone stop the movements of the eyeballs feel that your whole eyes and eyeballs became like a stone feel completely your eyes the balls have become stone now start humming from your deep stomach possible
Let the vibration not be silent. Again, create the vibration. Don't be silent. Do it with full vigor.
स्टॉप क्लोज अवेयरनेस शुद्धि Your awareness on throat center. Just forget the whole body except throat. Let your whole energy be centered on throat. Let your Vishuddhi chakra function beautifully. Letting the Shuddhi Chakra move with full energy. Be relaxed. Let your whole energy be centered on throat. Forget everything except throat. 